seriously. And maybe I shouldn't have said what I said this morning. I said, well, closest case that I know of was in Columbia. And they tell me there's two uh, cases in Ann Med right here in Anderson now. So, of course, that's, what, that's not what made it happen. But anyway, so I, it's, I don't know what to say about all this. There's a lot of mass hysteria that I believe is uncalled for. I do believe in being careful and sensible. Uh, we don't have any plans to cancel. I can see we've had some uh, a little deduction from this morning uh, for definite, but we're glad that you're back on Sunday night. So we're not going to focus on who's not here. We're going to focus on who is here, and that's God and you. So let's go to the Lord in prayer, asking God to be with us. And I'm just saying use some common sense and uh, you know, hopefully this thing will just fade on out really, really soon. Uh, Brother Larry Erskine, would you lead us in prayer tonight, brother, and we'll get things started. Yes, God. Lord, because of that virus. And Lord, you know, you, we got the same God. He oh, said, yes. We got the same God that walked on water, made the blind to see, and the lame to walk. Amen. Yes, Lord, we God. We got a God to protect, protect us. All we got to do is ask. You, you may ask, and we'll be protected. Lord, do not let anything hinder us from worshiping with you tonight. Lord, we ask you to be with our pastor, put a special anointing upon him, Lord, and Lord, those that's in the hospital tonight, Lord, would you put a special touch of love upon them and let them know that someone is caring and someone is praying about them. Let them know that you love them, Lord. Just put your arm around them. Lord, we ask you to be with those that's gone down by the graveside, Lord, just put a special touch upon them. And Lord, just just let feel that emptiness in their heart with you. Oh, Lord. yes, God. Lord, we're just going to give you praise for what you're going to do tonight in our service. We just ask you, Lord, if you would, just let your presence be felt tonight, Lord. Just come down, Lord, and worship with us and let us worship with you. And all that's done tonight, Lord, let us be careful. To give you all the glory and all the praise for it. All these things we pray in your precious name. Amen. 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 All right, Brother Steve, let's sing.
Sunday. Let's all stand together. I know whom I have believed. Thank you for coming. I know time we'll receive the Lord's tithes and offerings. Give us the Lord is bless you. Back there in the choir, Brother Al Gadinus, would you lead us in prayer, uh, please? Yes, God. Amen. Yes. We just thank you, Lord, for the goodness that you've done for us in the past, and we look forward to being hit in the cliff about this coronavirus, Lord, and being protected oh, from yes. that we can accomplish that which you would have to have us done in our life. Lord. Oh, yes, God. Jesus, we tell you we love you. We ask you to take this offering, Lord, and use it for your purposes here on this side of eternity. For we'll be, we'll be receiving our awards and our judgments for the things we do here. For it's in Jesus' name we ask these things and thank you for it. Amen. Amen.
may not want to shake hands, but at least wave at your neighbor. Speak to them as the choir comes down. Amen. Hey, everybody. You know, uh, people are something, aren't they? Uh, talking about the coronavirus and uh, you can't find toilet paper anywhere. <laughs> Richard uh, retired recently right up here at the paper plant where BASF used to be. Said he talked with one of his former co-workers, listen to this. This one plant right up the road here sends out either 250 to 260 tractor-trailer loads every day. 250 to 260 tractor-trailer loads per day. So uh, I'm telling you, this this whole mess is mind-boggling. I, I, I just can't wrap my head around if somebody's trying to destroy the economy. I, I don't know, but this mass hysteria is running me batty. I'm mad at the devil. I believe he's behind it, don't you? All right, Sister Janice, you come sing for us tonight. As always, I'm nervous. <laughs> you you can't never get up here and not get nervous. If you do, then you're probably in, uh, doing it on your own and... I told Debbie, I said, I tried to practice this some and been busy a lot this week. And then a while ago, before I could even get the second verse, I was <sighs> huffing and puffing. So <laughs> if I'm singing and, I, and the words keep going and I'm going, then you'll know I didn't give out of breath. <laughs> but I love all of you. You know, we're going, I'm like saying we're going to get through this. I love my Lord and I know y'all do too. And God's not going to let nothing happen to us through this. As far as me, it's, it sounds like it's a test. Trusting God. We just need to trust Him more and more. You know? He ain't going to let nothing happen to us. And besides that, if I catch it and I die, I know where I'm going anyway. So <laughs> We ain't got nothing to fear. I mean, you know, we'll just get there a little earlier than what we thought. But, but uh, just, I, just, I just have to make sure I got all my amends made and all that stuff. So, <laughs> But anyway, try to laugh at it. Satan don't like for you to laugh at him. We need to laugh at him and let him know God's got this. He's got this. So y'all pray for me. We're going to try to do a song called The Sweetest Words He Ever Said. And it's called The Sweetest Words Jesus, really, is what he what it said. And then two words that he said was, I forgive. And I just want to say right before I sing, when I heard this song, it really touched my heart. And the reason why it did, it brought me back to when I was crying like a baby and I know what I'd done, and I was asking him, please forgive me. Please forgive me, Lord. And, uh, and when he did, I just couldn't hardly believe it. I mean, it took me a long, 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 long time to really understand that he would forgive all the mean and miserable things that I did. But you know what? Just as much as I appreciate why he forgave me, that means the same thing to people that we've hurt or they've hurt us. And then we turn around and say, I forgive you. I mean, that, that means so much, you, you know. 
Uh, and it sets you free when you do that. You, you know, when you don't forgive somebody else, you're in prison yourself. So, and I learned these things. I didn't know these things, you know. So I, I didn't know how to get out of shower rain without Jesus. But uh, anyway, it's good to be forgiven. And it's good to forgive people. Because it does set you free where you can be able to live and do what God wants you to do. And you don't have nothing hanging over your head, yeah. you know. And uh, it's, I, y'all just pray for me. And we're going to try to do this song, okay? Like the woman brought to Jesus who was taken in her sin I was so ashamed of what I'd done and where I had been Well, justice called for payments that were more than I could give But mercy smiled upon me saying, I forgive Oh, the sweetest words he ever said were, I forgive this sin and sin was wiped away and I could live Well, I like the part where he told me about a mansion he would give But the sweetest words he ever said were, I forgive Ain't that true? Wasn't y'all happy when he forgave you? Boy, I felt like I could run a hundred miles when he forgave me Now, if you're tired of living with the wrongs that you have done just come on home to Jesus, you know he's a cleansing one. In his arms he'll hold you and you've just begun to live. When you hear him gently whisper, I forgive. Oh, the sweetest words he ever said was, I forgive. Death, sin, and sight was wiped away and I could live. Well, I hacked the part where he told me about the mansion he would give. But the sweetest words he ever said were, I forgive. Oh, sweetest words he ever said were, I forgive. Death, sin, and sin was wiped away and I could live. Well, I liked the part where he told me about the mansions he would give. But the sweetest words he ever said were, I forgive. Oh, I like the part where he told me about the mansions he would give. But the sweetest words he ever said were, I forgive. That's good. I'd like to ask us to adopt a motto during all this. Let me read you something very quickly. It says this, Thou shalt not be afraid for the terror by night, nor for the arrow that flieth by day, nor for the pestilence that walketh in darkness, nor the destruction that wasteth at noonday. A thousand shall fall at thy side, and ten thousand at thy right hand, but it shall not come nigh unto thee. He goes on to say, There shall no evil befall thee, neither shall any plague come nigh thy dwelling. And then the most famous part of it, For he shall give his angels charge, Concerning thee to keep thee in all thy ways. They shall bear thee up in thy hands. Lest thou dash thy foot against a stone. Don't know where this thing's going. But I know one thing. Like she said the worst can happen to us. You go to heaven. Somebody say amen. All right. Brother Herbert Moore. Come on around good brother. Uh, Brother Herbert was a Bible college student here at Gethsemane. Uh, been a blessing. I've had the opportunity to be his friend and uh, teacher and a lot of things. And uh, he's pastored for a while. 
Now he's representing Victory Baptist Press. You know about it. They've had representatives here before, but it's been a number of years. And when Brother Herbert took on this new ministry, I told him, I said, well, absolutely, Brother. We'll have you come by the church and let the church know what you're doing. Uh, so, Brother Herbert, come on around, Brother, and share. I think you may have. He's still got that video. He's got a little video and some things, but I'll let him uh, make the calls on that. But I love you, Brother. Appreciate you. Appreciate, appreciate that so much. What a pleasure it is to be amongst our friends tonight. We feel like this is family. When we're in churches all the time that we really don't know the people's names, but we know your names and we know that we're among friends tonight, and that's a blessing to our heart just to get the opportunity to do that. Let me bring you up to speed just a little bit. Of course, I did pastor Victory Baptist Church in Anderson for five years, and about two and a half years ago, my wife and I had... Uh, been associated with Victor Baptist Press. We've been going down yearly to the Jubilees and some special meetings down there. Got to be good close friends with Brother Fleur and the whole staff down there. And my wife grew up in the print shop. You know my wife's background. It's my wife over here, Evelyn. Soon be celebrating 48 years together. Isn't that a blessing? And she, grew, Amen. Amen. We grew, uh, she grew up in the print shop and uh, God had just given her a love for printing and uh, of course, uh, she and I both, being uh, uh, born-again Christians, we have a love for the Bible. And if you're a Christian tonight, you ought to love your Bible. You hold a treasure in your hand when you hold God's Word in your hand. And God began to deal with our hearts about two and a half years ago that He may be changing our direction. We love to travel. We love to meet people. And uh, God opened that door for us. And then starting January of this year, all of last year, we were part-time associates with the press and beginning in January of this year, we became full-time field representatives, which makes the total number of field representatives, Victor Baptist Press, now there's six couples that travel on the road. We're the only couple tonight that's uh, anywhere this close to home. The rest of our field reps, uh, Brother Bill Richburg tonight is in Oklahoma, uh, and I have no idea who the, where the other men are and their wives tonight. So pray for us as we travel. We appreciate a church like this. We appreciate this open door. It's a great blessing to us. If you will, turn with me to uh, 2 Timothy, the third chapter. I want to give you just a little bit out of God's Word about, about this treasure we hold in our hands. 2 Timothy, chapter number 3. Uh, you know the situation here. Paul, the Apostle Paul, is talking to this young Timothy. He's giving him instruction in the things of the Lord. Uh, and he says uh, in, these, uh, in this letter to Timothy that uh, there's a value in the Word of God that you need to, to take hold and get in your heart, get a grip on that this great treasure you hold. 2 Timothy Chapter number 3, we'll begin reading in uh, verse number 11. Verse number 11 in the Bible says, Persecutions, afflictions, which came to me into Antioch and Anconia and Lystra, what persecutions I endured, but out of them all the Lord delivered me. Yea, and all that live godly in Christ Jesus shall suffer persecution. But evil men and seducers shall wax worse and worse, deceiving and being deceived. Verse number 14, But continue thou in the things which thou hast learned and hast assured of, knowing of whom thou hast learned them, and that from a child thou hast known the holy scriptures, which are able to make thee wise unto salvation through faith which is in Christ Jesus, all scripture is given by inspiration of God and is profitable for doctrine and reproof for correction, for instruction and righteousness that the man of God may be perfect, thoroughly furnished unto all good works. Father, we thank you tonight for allowing us to be in this great church. We thank you for this uh, great testimony this church has for our area in Anderson County. God, we thank you tonight for your precious word. Lord, we'd ask you tonight that you'd help us as we take just a few moments to share our burden about Victory Baptist Press and the printing of Bibles to send to missionaries around the world. Lord, to say exactly what needs to be said, not to say anything that doesn't need to be said, only what would be in alignment with the blessed Holy Ghost tonight we'd want to say. God, we thank you for loving us, and we thank you for all you're going to do for us in the days ahead. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Now, Paul, talking to Timothy here, he's telling to Paul and exhorting him to stay in the Word of God. 
That's what he's saying. Stay in the Word of God. He's saying in these scriptures, he says, Timothy, I believe the scriptures. I believe every word of the scripture. That's what Brother Paul is saying right here. And he says that every passage, every book, every sentence, every word in the Bible from Genesis to Revelation is profitable to all believers. You and I can really learn a lesson right here. You see, if we're going to sustain these dark days, we're in a time of fear in America today. But as Christians, we've got the truth right in front of us. But we don't know what these politicians are telling us, but i got the truth right here in this King James Bible. Look what he says. He says, continue in the book because the book gives you wisdom unto salvation. If man, lost man, woman, and child are going to be saved, it's going to come through the gospel message in this book right here. Romans 1.16 says, For the gospel is the power of God unto salvation. And that's what he's saying here. He's saying here that this book, Timothy, this took book has the power to change, transform, to enable man, woman, and child to walk with God. I think it's a great blessing, folks. We hold a treasure in our hand. I, I like in verse 14 when he says, Continue. Continue. Continue in the book. Be steadfast in it. Uh, it's not enough to say I believe the book, but to continue. Read the book. Study the book. Glean from God's Word so we'll be strong in the Lord. I think what he's saying right here in verse 15, he says, from a child. Do you see what I see right here? The importance of sharing God's Word with children. That's what, I believe that his grandmother and his mother taught him the Scriptures, That's Brother right. Sam. I believe, she, I believe they did. And I believe he's exhorting us to do that. The Lord himself on the road to Emmaus there, he even spoke of the Old Testament scriptures. He spoke of himself when he said, beginning at Moses and, and all the prophets, he expounded unto him all the scriptures, the things concerning who? Concerning himself. What he's saying right here is this book, the whole book from Genesis to Revelation is about Jesus. It teaches us about our Lord and Savior. This was the burden that fell on the heart of Pastor Thomas Woodward at Victor Baptist Church in Milton, Florida in 1984. In 1984, Brother Woodward knew that there were missionaries like Brother Scott goes over to the Philippines. Uh, we just shipped a shipment to the Philippines last week, Brother. A whole 40-foot container, 20-foot container to the Philippines. Uh, he had a burden about there's missionaries all around the world and little pastors of little churches who, who do not have a King James Bible in their language and no way to get one. And he began to print on, in a back Sunday school class on an antique printing press. And that went on until in 1991, God miraculously blessed Victor Baptist Press in a new, brand new building, brand new equipment, a massive printing machine that you'll get to see. And since that time, Victor Baptist Press has had one objective, to print the Word of God and get it to any missionary, any little pastor, anywhere in the world, free of charge and in a language that they can use. I have a video tonight. I want to stop at this point. And, uh, brother, can you play that video for us? This will show you some things, and then we'll, we'll catch back up after the video. Brother, if you'll play that for us. talking about here is Victor Baptist Press, uh, Don and Carla Rich are our field reps down in Peru. And that's what you're seeing. That's what this video uh, was going to show us about is uh, that we, a project started in 2010 to ship Bibles to the country of Peru. And Don and Carla Rich uh, became distributors and they partnered with Victor Baptist Press to ship with no uh, Bible. To ship Bibles to in March of 2012, the shipment of Bibles arrived in Peru by boat, then was brought to us by truck. Because of the massive weight, the entire load of over 1,700 cases had to be unloaded by hand before the container could be taken off the truck. 
The container was then lowered into place and then leveled up before reloading all of the cases back into it. At the end of the day, we were all tired but excited when the last case of Bibles were placed back into the container. News of the availability of the Bibles for churches spread quickly. Our doorbell began to ring as local pastors came to receive this blessing for their congregations. We also began delivering Bibles to many national pastors and missionaries in the mountains around us. We enjoyed seeing all of the smiling faces who appreciated this wonderful gift to their ministries. The national pastor who works with us was glad to receive cases of Bibles for our own church, Iglesia Bautista Calvario. Most of the time, we don't get to meet those in the congregations who receive the Bible, so some of the pastors have sent us some pictures that bless our hearts. These are a few of the families and individuals from the coastal desert region who have received the Bibles. Here are some great photos from churches in the jungle river villages. In most of the villages in this area, the pastor is the only person who has a Bible. We were told that grown men were crying as they received the first Bible that they had ever held. But now each member of the family has their own Bible to study. Now everyone can follow along with the pastor as he preaches. Young minds and hearts can now read God's word, such as this young lady who is holding her first Bible. We have been blessed to personally deliver Bibles into at least 11 of the 24 departments of Peru. We've also been able to get Bibles into six different countries in South America. In a recent conference in Lima, we spoke to several hundred pastors and missionaries. It was a great time of fellowship and getting to know many whom we've never met. After the conference, pastors lined up to receive cases of Bibles for their churches. When all the Bibles were gone, I found myself cornered by many more needing this blessing for their congregations. I took down the information of each and promised them that I would contact them when we had more Bibles. Within 18 months of receiving the shipment of Bibles, all of them have been delivered or promised. I'm contacted weekly by pastors and missionaries asking for Bibles in areas that we have not yet reached. At last count, we have requests for several thousand more Bibles. An empty container is a blessing that shows that many now have the Word of God in their hands. But it is also a reminder of those who still do not have a Bible to read. I'd like to share a video that was sent to us by our contact in one area of the jungle where we understand they need thousands of more Bibles for churches there. I'll translate for you. We are a group of Christian brothers here in Utupis. In large part, the pastors are the only ones who have Bibles. We are very grateful that you have made it possible that the Bible could arrive in this place. We are very happy and send greetings to you all. There are many churches in this zone that do not have Bibles. It is our prayer that God would make it possible that Bibles would arrive for those churches also. God bless you. I'm Jim Fallour, the director of the Victory Baptist Press here in Milton, Florida. In a moment, we're going to give you a demonstration about how our workers can take perfectly clean paper and turn it into the printed Word of God. When it's determined that we're going to print a Bible or a Bible portion in any particular language, we first have to have that keyed into a computer. From the computer, it's sent to a filmmaker and the negatives are produced. The negatives are then pasted up on a masking sheet. The masking sheet is used to burn that text into a metal plate. Metal plates are then installed on our big web press and prints on both sides of the paper as it comes off the big roll. It then goes through a slitter, a cutter, a folder, and comes out the other end of the press in the form of a 32-page booklet called a signature. If we're doing complete Bibles, it takes 34 signatures for each Bible produced. If we're doing New Testaments, it takes 10 signatures for each New Testament produced. And now let's watch the big press in actual operation.
The next phase of the operation in completing a complete Bible is printing covers. Now this is a vinyl cover that will go on one of the Spanish Bibles that we're printing currently. But first of all, it has to have the name of the Bible imprinted on it. Like this gold imprint that you see that says Santa Biblia. That's for the Spanish Bible. Now this little press is an old, old press made in Germany in 1950. But it's amazing what a fabulous job it does. I think this might be the quietest running piece of equipment that we have in our shop. Me and the press have something in common. We're both getting old, but it still does a great job. We're now ready for the final phase of the production of a complete Bible or of a New Testament. In this 12 pocket collating system, the pages are put in proper order. They then go around this circular part of the machine, have the covers glued to the back of them, and then go through this three blade trimmer and have the outside edges trimmed, and then they're boxed and ready to be shipped to a mission field somewhere around the world. The book of John and the book of Romans is by far the most popular item that we have ever printed at Victory Baptist Press. This machine takes two signatures, which completes the John and Romans and the cover, puts them together, stitches or staples it on the back side, trims the three outer edges, and brings it out the other end in a completed product. This has been a great tool for mass evangelism, no telling how many countries around the world. Pray for us and consider what you can do to help us get more Bibles to missionaries around the world. I hope that helped you to understand what goes on at Victor Baptist Press there in Milton, Florida. And my wife and I have We've really developed a love for that ministry. And uh, by the way, Brother Johnny Wise helped do some of the editing on that tonight. So I'll give Johnny credit for that. That was a, uh, and I appreciate it. I wanted to condense that a little bit. It was too long. And Johnny knew how to do that with a computer. I had no idea. So I appreciate him doing that. For 30 years, Victor Baptist Press has been printing Bibles and sending them to missionaries around the world and pastors of small congregations like you saw in 25 plus languages and never had to make a charge for any of them. Every day there's a dedicated staff that assembles there at seven o'clock and I can tell you they do get there at seven o'clock. My wife works with that staff on and off and she's in there working while I'm still drinking coffee and they work hard all day and they print Bibles and, and portions of God's scripture and ship out scripture every day. And then we have a group of financial supporters around the nation cost a lot of money to ship out thousands of Bibles. Brother Scott would understand what it would take to send a 40-foot container to the Philippines. Cost a lot of money. About seventy to $80,000. That's what a container costs to ship. Uh, uh, and we have a group of financial supporters around the country, both churches and individuals, that uh, make this all possible financially. We have a group of six field reps, my wife and I being one of that group that go from church to church all over the country seeking support for printing Bibles and for the Bible printing ministry. And we do special projects all during the year. This video that you saw was uh, a video there that was uh, first put together in 2010 when Don Rich went to, to, uh, down to Peru and began to, print, to distribute Spanish Bibles like that. That's exactly one of the Bibles. Uh, at that time, there were about 25,000 Bibles went the first load. Well, since those times, there's been over 100,000 Spanish Bibles that that one missionary has distributed down there. And um, uh, these containers that we ship uh, out are loaded with God's Word. They're let, prayed over there in the parking lot, and they're shipped somewhere around the world. But we have the capacity at Victory Baptist Press to do so much more with the equipment God's blessed us with. So that's where we need churches like yours and your personal help to make this ministry possible. We need, a, we need financial help right now more than ever. I think you'll agree with me that we live in a world that desperately needs the Word of God. Uh, and in times like we live in, the truth is uh, all that mankind has for any, any hope we have comes in the truth of God's Word. Uh, and, and our financial support comes in various ways. Consider this. For about 25 cents to 50 cents, we can print and ship a John Romans anywhere in the world to any missionary. For about a dollar, we can print a complete New Testament, a whole New Testament, 
print it and ship it, send it around the world uh, to any missionary. And for about $3, we can print a complete Bible, a complete King James Bible in over 25 languages, ship it anywhere around the world. Where else could you invest your money to a more worthy project than putting God's Word in the hands of folks do, who do not have that uh, and, and sending it to places uh, where the need is so great? So we need to partner with for you to partner with us at Victory Baptist Press. That's our mission statement, if you will. That's our burden tonight. We need you to partner with us. You can do that in any of three ways. Number one, consider taking Victory Baptist Press as a monthly mission effort. However you do missions at your church. We ask churches everywhere to do that. Consider putting miss missions, uh, our, our uh, Victory Baptist Press, on your missions budget for monthly support. Doesn't matter the amount, even a small amount given consistently and regularly makes a huge difference in the planning of what's going on at Victor Baptist Press. Secondly, uh, we're always doing these major projects that I mentioned. Consider supporting uh, or making a one time gift to a major project. I'll give you an example a roll of those a paper that you saw on that big press, as of about three weeks ago, was $1,137. That $1,137 will print 650 Spanish Bibles. I think that's a pretty good, pretty good investment for your money. Consider some help for something like that. And then thirdly, we have an online bookstore that you can shop, victorybaptistpress.com. Uh, over the years, Victor Baptist Church has put together uh, a, an assortment of the best fundamental books and music uh, and every dime when you shop Victor Baptist Press goes for printing Bibles. But more important than the financial need at Victor Baptist Press, we ask for your prayers. We ask for the prayers of God's people. Pray for the safety of our staff. Pray for the, the, uh, uh, the, the, the faithful giving of other churches around the country and doors to open that we can get into. And consider what you and I can do together uh, to help put Bibles in the hands of folks who don't have them around the world. Now, we have a little display set up at the back back there. If you will, please take one of our prayer cards. We have our prayer cards back there. It's got, uh, got our pictures on it. Now, one, of those, one on there doesn't look too pretty, but the other one's right pretty. I kind of prejudice, you know. Get one of those put on your refrigerator. Get one of our brochures. It'll tell you all the history of Victor Baptist Press, tell you a lot about it. And then I'll also put, I think I have some... Uh, newsletters back there. These are printed quarterly, okay? It tells you the latest things that's going on at Victor Baptist Press. You'll find this very interesting. On the back, you'll notice there's a picture of the field reps. All the field reps, but you don't see the mowers on there. Why is that? Well, in order to get your picture on the newsletter, you have to be full time. And this was the first quarter, and we didn't make it, but we've already been assured I'm going to get my picture on the paper next time. So we became full-time so I could get my picture on there. No, that's not true. You know that's not true. <laughs> Pray for us if you will. Help us if you can. We love, uh, we love this ministry. Uh, I want to tell you folks, as my friends and uh, as a local church, our sister church, I've never met a, a, a crew of people uh, more dedicated to the Lord than that group, that group at Victory Baptist Press. They have impressed me through the years of people that truly love the Lord and truly want, truly have a heart for God's Word. So if you'll pray, I would appreciate it. Uh, Brother Sam, if, I, if you'll give me the liberty to do so, I have just a few things I'd like to share tonight. That, uh, in this time that we live in, the need for the Bible. I keep saying that. Turn with me, with me if you will, to Matthew chapter number 14. Matthew chapter number 14, we're going to be reading starting in verse number 22. Now, we know in this chapter we see the miracle. We see the miracle here of the feeding of the 5,000 and immediately after that in Matthew 14, immediately after the feeding of the 5,000, that miracle in verse number 22, the Bible says, and straightway Jesus constrains the disciples to get into a ship. And to go out before him to the other side, while he sent the multitudes away. And when he had sent the multitudes away, he went up to a mountain apart to pray. And uh, when evening come, he was there alone. But the ship was now in the midst of the sea, 
tossed with waves, for the wind was contrary. And the, in the fourth watch of the night, Jesus went into them walking on the sea. And when the disciples saw him walking on the sea, there were trouble saying, It is a spirit. And they cried out for fear. But straightway, Jesus spake to them, saying, Be of good cheer. Uh, it is I. Be not afraid. Let's pause just for a second right there. Uh, church, it's time for us to be not afraid. Amen? Amen. Right. It's time for us to be not afraid. God's still sovereign. He's still in control. Nothing. Uh, this virus is is uh, is, is not going to change God one bit. He's not one one jot one tittle. Uh, the word of God hasn't changed. Nothing's changed. If people are still dying going to hell because they're lost, our mission statement is still to evangelize the world. None of that's changed. He says, "Be not afraid." Verse twenty-eight. And Peter answered and said, "Lord, if it be Thou, bid me come unto Thee on the water." And he said, "Come." And when Peter was come down out of the ship, he walked on the water to go to Jesus. But when he saw the wind bolsterous, he was afraid, as that word fear again, and beginning to sink, he cried, saying, Lord, save me. And immediately Jesus stretched forth his hand and caught him and said unto him, O thou of little faith, wherefore that thou doubt? And when they come into the ship, the wind ceased and they were there in the ship, came and worshipped him, saying, Of a truth, thou art the Son of God. I'm proud of our country tonight. I'm proud to be an American. I'm proud I live in a country tonight where our president has to build walls to keep people out. Amen. Most of the tyrant governments around the world build walls to keep people in. I'm proud to be an American tonight. And, I, and I'd like to publicly say to the liberals and the socialists, uh, that uh, our country may not be perfect, but it's the best the world has to offer. I'm proud to be an American. I believe God has blessed this nation in, in a special way, not because we behaved, because we haven't behaved very well, but I believe the prayers of God's people and the anchor that's been driven down in the soul and, and, and on God's word has blessed this nation. I believe in three basic ways. I say first of what, what America has done for humanity. Whenever there's a storm, there's a tsunami, there's an earthquake, there's famine in the land, America is the nation that goes to the aid. Most of the financial support will be from America. I believe God's blessed our nation for that. I secondly believe that God's blessed our nation for what we've done for the spreading of the gospel. Brother Scott will agree with me that 95% of the missionaries on the field today are out of America. $95 out of every 100 that goes to the mission field are sent by churches like this right here from America. I believe that. Yeah. I also believe that God's blessed America for, because we've been a friend to Israel. He said, I'll bless them that bless thee, and I'll curse yeah. them that don't. Yeah. Amen. I believe that tonight, God's blessed our nation. We're the only nation on the earth tonight, whether we think about it or not, that prints in God we trust on our money. I think God's blessed us for that. You know, we're under a mandate as a church tonight to stand up for the Lord, to stand up for Jesus. If we hush up and be quiet, the liberals will take over. And uh, way back years ago, when prayer was taken out of school, 1964, Get this now, in 1964, there were 12 million Southern Baptists. 12 million. If 12 million just Southern Baptists had voted correctly, had spoke up, prayer wouldn't have been took out of school. 12, mi 12 million, just one block. That doesn't count everybody else. God has blessed our country. And it's only by His grace tonight that judgment doesn't fall on our nation. I believe it's God's people. I really believe that. I believe that the body of Christ tonight must not get distracted. I believe regardless whether there's a virus coming or what happens, our focus needs to be on the Lord Jesus Christ. It needs to be on getting people saved tonight. In Matthew 14, Jesus talked to those disciples and He says to get in the boat and uh, uh, we're going to the other side. You go to the other side. And on the way, they encounter a storm. We know what storms of life. We're going through a storm in America right now. And they look out on the water during that storm, and they see that wave walker, the Jesus himself. Boy, I like that. You see, calm to see. He's in charge of that. He's all about peace tonight. And, and Peter asks a, a dumb question here. He says, Lord, is it really you? Now, who else thinks going to be walking on the water? Amen. <laughs> 
Peter says, Lord, if it be thou bid me to come to you in the water. Look at verse 29. Look what he says in verse 29. Boy, this, this is what the Lord said to me way back in 1988 on a back pew at Second Baptist Church in Belden, South Carolina. He said, come. Amen. That Holy Ghost said, it's, it's time. It's time. It's draw him unto me. You see, uh, he says, come walk on the water, Peter. You know what? I believe this Bible is literal, Brother Sam. I believe he walked on the water. I don't care what the liberals say. I believe he literally walked on the water. That's what my Bible says. You see, I see right here a picture. Peter was out on the water in the midst of a storm, but he was still in the will of God. You know what that shows me? That we can walk with God, we can walk to God, and we can walk for God even in the midst of a coronavirus. Even in the midst of any kind of storm, we can stand up for Jesus. Look what, look at verse number 30. But when he saw the wind boisterous, he became afraid. Oh, here's why we've got to be careful. We've got to be careful right here. Satan wants us to do this. Satan wants us to be afraid. He wants us to notice something. Peter got distracted. He got distracted from the Lord right here. He got because he saw the circumstances around him. That's all he noticed. He just noticed the circumstance. He was walking out there living for God and, and keeping his eyes on Jesus, and he noticed something around him. Right now, church, if we begin to focus on what's going on in the news, if we begin to watch all the, you can, hey, let me tell you, you can overdose on news tonight. This, this, this is God's news, and it's not going to change. It's not going to change. You can overdose on that news. Now, you don't need to stick your head in the ground, but you need to stick your head in the book tonight. Amen? In verse 30, look what he said. He said, he was afraid and beginning to sink. Fear will sink you every time. It'll sink a church tonight. If we, if we tonight, if we get fearful, if we get fearful, we'll, we'll lose our testimony as a church. We will. We'll lose our church testimony. He said here, we, we'll lose our hope as a church. Jesus is our hope, not this nation, not our economy. Uh, the stock market two weeks ago was up here, now it's down there. You see, that hope just disappeared, didn't it? My hope's in the Lord tonight. How about you? My hope's in this book tonight. We'll lose our hope. Amen. Hey, hey, also, if we get distracted, we'll lose our joy. You know what? We ought to be the happiest people in Anderson County tonight. Amen. We ought to be happy tonight. I want you to notice in these verses that Satan is in a distracting business. He wants you and I distracted as Christians tonight. Peter was in good shape. He was out on the water. He was walking to the Lord. Everything was doing real good, and he got distracted. He noticed that that wind was boisterous. Hey, there's a storm around me. And he took his eyes off the Lord. Don't you notice what district? He wasn't looking at some naked lady out there. He wasn't, had, there wasn't somebody there using profanity and cursing and going, carrying on. He just noticed his surroundings, and it got him distracted from the Lord. He just noticed circumstances. The Bible tells us that we have a threefold enemy tonight, and he attacks us continuously. We've got an external an internal and an infernal enemy. First off is that external enemy. That's our flesh tonight, folks. The flesh is our enemy. It's our natural attraction to things. And natural attraction, by the way, can be a fatal attraction tonight. Every, all of us are prone to wonder. We're just like sheep. We see grease, uh, gr green grass on the other side of that mountain. We go over there and we get out of the sight of the shepherd. We're out of his protective hand tonight when we do that. We're lured by something over there. That's a fishing word. Now, I'm not a fisherman. I, I've, uh, my, my wife's a pretty good fisher person. I, I, now, I don't know how you say all this stuff properly. She can catch fish. If you depend on me to feed you in a fish fry, buddy, you're going to eat beef, I'll tell you that. And I'm not going to, I can't catch fish. The fish don't like me. Uh, my grandson fishes competitively. He's a good fisherman, but not me. But you know what a fisherman does? He takes a lure that looks just like the bait that that fish wants. And he puts it out there because he knows that fish is going to bite that because it's the right color and the right shape. But you know what? What's hid on the inside of that lure? A hook. That's the way Satan works tonight. That, that, that enemy of the flesh, oh, it looks pretty out there. But when we bite into that, it's what? It's got a hook in it. It's going to pinch you when you bite into that. Our second enemy is the devil. He's that counterfeiter that creates that hook in that loop. Yeah. If you bite into him, he'll jerk the life out of you tonight. Yes, 
That's if you take his faith. And our third enemy we have is the flesh, is, uh, uh, is uh, the world. You see, that's that attraction to things of this world. The Bible tells us the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes, and the pride of life. One preacher said that that lust of the flesh was our younger years. We remember those teenage years, you're attracted to different things, and it's just natural. And, and, and we, we, we have that lust of the flesh we battle with as a Christian. And then we go through those years of working years when we have a family and, and we're, we're buying a car and we're buying a house and we're trying to get ahead in life. Those are those years when we suffer from the lust of the eye. The eye's got to have it. And then we see that, that pride of life that the Bible talks about. Those are those years that a lot of us gray-haired, fa- I got my hair cut this week, my wife cuts my hair. And I watched the floor, and gray hair fell on the floor. I, she must have had a bucket full of that and was just pouring it somewhere. I know it didn't come on my head. But, you know, that's that pride of life when we get older. Well, I've, I've done pretty well for myself. I saved a little money, and my truck's paid for. You know, pride goes before destruction. The Bible tells us that if a man think he stands, he better take heed lest he fall. Uh, that's what the Bible talks about. You see, those are our enemies in life that we, that we battle. Uh, we, so we should never say, I'll do this, I have victory over that, or I, I can't follow that because none of us are super spiritual. All of us are just held by the grace of God. All of us are just kept by His love. Uh, if you get hooked by the world, the devil will destroy your life. It will destroy your, your testimony. Uh, you see, sinners are saved by the grace of God. And it's only His grace and mercy that, but, that we're going to ever be into heaven and that we're allowed into His heaven. It's His heaven, and we're going to do it His way. Our attention needs to be focused on Him tonight and not on all this stuff that's on CNN. We, by the way, Fox News, I think, will probably give you a little bit closer to the truth. Uh, but regardless, the Bible's going to give you 100% truth. We need to be focused on the Lord tonight. If we... Uh, uh, if we take our eyes off of him, then we're going to be just like Peter. We're going to begin to sink. Natural attractions are a fatal attraction if we get too attracted to them. When a person gets his eyes on somebody else, then he gets distracted, and he'll get out of church. There's pews empty all over America tonight because somebody noticed, did you hear what somebody said? Or the preacher said something made me mad. You know, we need to be focusing on Jesus. Uh, we, we keep our eyes on him. We won't pay any attention to things like that. Just because somebody at church turns their back on me, I, don't, I shouldn't be turning my back on the Lord. I need to be standing up for him. Circumstances will get you out of church tonight, folks. Circumstances will do that for you. And the devil will see to it. Uh, uh, that person that you're talking about, that you notice, that's not the one that died on Calvary's cross for you. That person that you, that you notice that you disagree with is not the one that paid de- uh, uh, sin's penalty for you and that made a home for you in heaven. Now I want you to notice, though, that Peter, even though he got distracted, even though he began to sink, I want you to notice in verse 31, look what it says. This is the love of God. And immediately Jesus stretched forth his hand and caught him. You see, God responds to our urgency to his children. Uh, God is our refuge and our strength in a very present help in trouble. Jesus responds to these words, Lord, save me. Uh, you see, Peter was doing the sinking. Our Lord was doing the saving. The, the Lord had to reach further down than Peter could reach up. Boy, I love that song. When my Savior reached down for me. When he reached way down for me. That's what he had to do for me. Amen. He had to reach way down for me. You see, in verse 33, when those who were all in the ship saw that, they said they all worshipped him. You see, when, when uh, we see God bless somebody else, it brings praise to our heart. It makes us happy. It makes us joyful then. Peter got distracted, uh, but when he did, he cried out, Lord, save me. You know what happens in those three words? Lord, save me. Heaven moves. It gets heaven's attention. I'm going to tell you a little story. I shared this with Brother Sam this week. A few weeks ago, my wife and I got a telephone call. 
a, a woman that was at one time was in our family. She was the most wicked lady my wife and I had ever known. We never heard the words love out of her mouth. All we ever heard was profanity and cursings and revelings is, the Bible, is a good Bible word. That's all we ever knew about her. She was the most wicked person we knew. We got a call that she was dying at the Anderson Hospital. She was in the intensive care. We began to pray that God would, the Holy Spirit would move ahead and do something ahead of us because we didn't have anything to take on our own. We just wanted to be in the will of God. We began to pray, and I believe, I believe he answered that prayer. We went to the Anderson Hospital, and she lay in that bed, and she did look as though she was at death's door, and they were told her she wasn't going to make it out of the hospital. Uh, she was just pitiful looking. We walked in and hadn't seen her in a long time, and she saw who it was, and she said, Get away from me. I'm too wicked for you to be around me. Wow. And, uh, and that's a fact. That's a fact. That's the impression that we got. She said, You don't need to look upon me. I'm too wicked. Begin to take this Bible. This is what it's amazing about this book, folks. It's an amazing book. I didn't have anything to take. I didn't have anything to say. Wasn't what I said. We simply shared the word of God that the Lord Jesus loved her. Regardless of what anybody else said, regardless about what, what, what any family member had told her, Jesus loves her. And we began to show her a few verses from God. That's the power of God unto salvation, this word right here. And it was that power book when when i shared she was that whosoever would cry call upon the name of the lord shall be saved she screamed out lord save me i've never i've never in my life i promise you my wife and i she'll t make testimony of this we saw her life her countenance change right before our very eyes the color of her face the look on her face she said, something leaped from inside of me. Could that be a demon? I, I said, well, sis, let me tell you one thing. The Holy Ghost and that demon can't live in the same place. And I believe that Holy Ghost just took up his abode in your heart. Now, that's been about three weeks ago. Her dad had prayed for her for years and years and years and years to get saved. He passed away two weeks ago. She was at the funeral, a born-again Christian. And she said, I know I'm going to be in heaven with my daddy. Isn't that a blessing? Three words, folks. Lord, save me. Tonight, he'll save a lost soul. That's the God we serve. That's the power of God unto salvation. That's exactly what we're talking about tonight. Now, I want you to look at one other thing. God's got a reward for us. I want you to look at verse number 34. And when they were gone over, they came into the land of Gennesaret. And when the men that were in that place had knowledge of them, they sent out into the country all round about and brought unto him all that were diseased and besought him that they might only touch the hem of his garment. And as many as were touched, made perfectly whole. This word Gennesaret, Gennesaret was about a mile and a half by three and a half mile part of, of, of land there on the Sea of Galilee where Beautiful flowers grew and palm trees and olive plants and tropical flowers. It was, a, it was a garden of Eden. It means garden of riches in Greek. You see, when the storm passed, when uh, the Lord uh, uh, was with them through the storm and they made it through, they had a garden on the other side. You know what I see right there? Peter found right there uh, a blessing from God. He said, if you love me, feed my sheep. And he knew he was serving, and he was with the master himself, the shepherd himself. You see, what Jesus did was get them to where they would be better on the other side than they were before they went through the storm. I think tonight, if we'll persevere, if we'll keep our heart and our, and our soul and our testimony anchored in the Word of God, there'll be a time, the time's coming, when he'll say, Well done, my good and faithful servant. Tonight, folks, as we gather here today at Gethsemane Baptist Church, and God's allowed us this time, we need to keep our focus on the Lord. We need not to get distracted. A lot going on in our world. We serve the same God. Several years ago, uh, as Brother Sam could probably testimony, he had some, some issues like this in, in, through the ministry. I got up one Saturday morning, and I was just defeated. I was just defeated. I felt like uh, I wasn't doing the, the job that God had 
had laid on my heart to do at Victor Baptist Church, and I was disappointed in myself, and uh, I was disappointed in some people in the church, and uh, and every pastor would tell you the same story. And I got up that morning, just uh, I just I, I don't know, I guess I was just mad at myself and uh, disappointed in myself, and uh, I uh, just kind of dest- and, and I called a friend of mine and Brother Sam's. Uh, Brother Frank Bryant. And I called Brother Frank, and he was actually on a skid steer loader. And the phone rang and rang. Had had to wait on him to, to cut the machine off. And boy, I, I laid it on him that morning. I, nothing was going right, and I'd hit every stump there was. And he said, "Hold it, brother, hold it." I said, "I don't understand what you're talking about." But I got up this morning, read my Bible, and I hope you did, and said, as "Far as I could tell, God's still God, and the Word's still true." So that's not changed at all. You see, uh, we need to be faithful, even in this storm that we're going through in America, to keep our eyes focused on Jesus. For over 30 years, Victor Baptist Press and that staff there have made the printing of God's Word and getting it to missionaries around the world their focus, and they've not lost their focus, and I thank God for that. They've, been, they've not got distracted from the Bible printing ministry at Victor Baptist Press. Tonight, we need to not get distracted. We need to keep our hearts and our minds focused. If you have the opportunity to tell somebody about Jesus, what a blessing it would be to hear somebody say, Lord, save me. And heaven rejoice. And the angels of heaven make room for another child of God to enter into paradise. What a blessing. I appreciate this church. We appreciate this church more than we can tell you. We love you folks. And we count you as our, our, our dear friends and a church we can count on. And you know what? You need a church you can count on. We know that we can come here and we'll be loved. And when we're, when we're down and out and when we feel lonely, we know these people love us. We appreciate and I appreciate the time to be with you, brother. God bless y'all. Pray for us as we travel. Pray for us. Pray for the folks at the press that we can be vigilant about getting God's word in the hands of missionaries and pastors around the world because the time's coming soon when our Lord's going to say, come up. And we're going to hear that call. Brother, I appreciate you. I want to get Sister Janet come to the piano. Herb, hold on one minute there, brother. If anybody's ever wondered why we went to the trouble to have a Bible college, I want to submit that man to you right there. He's a graduate of our Bible college right here. And the Lord has used him and I appreciate her. We've been friends for years. What I want to do tonight, first of all, I want us to have altar call. If God's touched your heart, if you've let this hysteria from the world beat you down or pull you down, I want you to come like he preached there a few moments ago, call on the Lord. But above all things, if anybody here is lost, call on him for salvation. Would you stand, please? Sister Janet. Church officers, we can count on you to come and pray. And with people coming down, come on around this old-fashioned altar, whosoever will.
be seated for just a few quick moments. I promise we'll have you uh, ride out. I'm going to ask, I'd ask Roger a moment ago to get a few ushers together. What I, I don't know about you, but I, I'm so thankful tonight that in my office and in my home, we've, we've been able, been blessed to have Bibles everywhere. Your home's probably the same way, but there are people all over the world never had a copy of the Word of God. I know Brother Herb well. I know the ministry that he's working with. And what I'd like for us to do tonight is first to receive an offering to help them to print some Bibles. Roger, would you come on around and get you a few guys together, please? While they're coming and before we pray, I'm not sure what all I told you earlier. We got told about this corona business, but Wade Turner, that's uh, Lynn Ham's uncle. He's the Wade that had Wade's produce right up the road here. He had passed earlier today. Cowboy Turner, no relation, Irving's brother, was at the point of passing. They've called it for this for three weeks, but he really, really, really was low a little while ago. May not have even made it till this point right now. These others that we talked about this morning, but I do want to add Jamie Fountain uh, to our list. Uh, also, Tim Keaton up in the hospital. And then all these families in bereavement, the Mason family, the Trammell McRoby, uh, McLean, Taylor, Cop, Floyd, Davis, and two sets of Gentry families, adding the Burdett family, that's uh, Crystal, as nicknamed Cricket, 45 years old with a massive heart attack and went home uh, to see the Lord. And then uh, Taylor family, the Scott family, and then uh, Wade Turner's family. So as we pray, remember all these that are sick, those in the hospital, Sister Linda Smith and Neuro, pray for her, all the needs. But let's, as we receive this offering tonight uh, to help get the word of God out, pray that God would meet every need. So uh, Brother John Black will lead us in prayer, please. share a little extra blessing tonight 
You know, we do the track ministry, and we send gospel tracks all over the world for Fellowship Track League, brother, same as you folks do with the Bibles. And uh, Brother Al just caught me, and the track ministry is in excellent shape financially. We support, you may or may not know this, folks, but we support our own track ministry at $2,100 a month. I mean, the mailing is expensive. Al said that the track ministry is in such good shape, and as the director of the track ministry, he said, we don't need our check this month. Let's give it to them. So that would be... So that would be not only the offering, but then 2100 it would go to our track ministry. We'll put it on over there. So that'll, buy, that'll make a lot of Bibles and uh, mail some. Very quickly tonight, last night, for you ladies who want to order one of those lady ministries, T-shirt, see Sister Tanya out there. And Opaline had caught me earlier, and I didn't have a chance to write it down. Chad Young is in the Greenville Hospital, and he has an aneurysm on his brain in a coma. So pray for Chad Young and their family. All of our other ministries that we do the same every week, we won't hold you any longer tonight. Uh, may the Lord bless you, and Herb will, don't leave before you see me. We'll get everything uh, squared up, help Victory Baptist Press. Uh, may the Lord bless you. Uh, let's stand, and since we had prayer a moment ago before the offering for the sick, we'll just dismiss our Father. We ask you tonight, send us out of here excited over the privilege of being a Christian. And Lord, as Christians, let us do all we can to get the Word of God in the hands of as many people as we possibly can, both here in Star, Iva, Holman Park, Anderson, and Belton, Hartwell, all this area, and worldwide. So, Father, we love you. Thank you for first loving us. Uh, give us a burden to serve you better. Forgive us of our sins. In Jesus' name, amen. And